Alright, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the regular expression method re.sub. There's some nuances that you should be aware of when using re.sub, so uh, I'll go into a little more details as to how you can efficiently use re.sub. Okay, so re.sub basically uh, utilizes a regular expression and then it uh, substitutes a, a certain word or a series of words with the, the output from the regular expression. So I have a concrete example here. I will just, um, let's see, just increase this a little bit so those of you on your phone have no problem reading this. But okay, so we have a string. It's a, a multi-line string. US stock index, futures, blah, blah, blah. Um, the things I want you to be aware of is uh, United States. So I actually uh, purposely put a couple of instances of United States within this uh, paragraph. So we have US here, and then we have another case of US that's represented by USA. So we have uh, two instances of United States. Yeah, so let me just actually restart this kernel, clear all outputs. So we'll start off with the uh, import.re, then I will uh, uh, run the string. And now let's take a look, a uh, closer look at this code, re.sub. So Essentially, the first part is the regular expression. So this is the regular expression. The second part, this uh, United States, is what you want to substitute the uh, output from the regular expression into. And the third part is the string. So just uh, one more time. The first part is the regular expression. The second part is the, the string that you want to substitute in. So in this case, we're going to be substituting all the outputs of the regular expression with the uh, United States. And the third parameter or argument is the uh, string. So all I'm doing here, all my regular expression, um, all it's doing is looking for uh, different instances of United States. So United States can be spelled out U dot uh, S dot, or it can be spelled out uh, US, or it can be spelled out uh, USA. So it's looking for all the different instances of uh, United States, and it's going to substitute it with uh, uh, United States, the two words United States. So if I run this, so it outputs the entire string, including the uh, substituted words. So as you can see, now we have United States uh, fully spelled out and United States fully spelled out. So if you look at the earlier string, uh, these two have been uh, substituted in by uh, United States. So that's essentially what uh, re.sub does. It finds the outputs of the regular expression and it will substitute it with your uh, desired string. And uh, the one thing you guys should note is that this is a multi-line string. So despite it being multi-lined, uh, re.sub uh, searches throughout each line. It's not confined to the one single line or the beginning of a string or, you know, it doesn't have such, such restrictions. And the other thing you guys should note is, of course, it it prints the entire string with the uh, substituted words. So this was just a, a simple example of re.sub, and now I'm going to go into some nuances that I want you guys to be aware of. All right, so now I'm going to actually uh, show you guys one of the uh, cool, uh, some of the cool characteristics or some of the cool things you can do with uh, re.sub. And the first thing is you can actually use functions with, with re.sub. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of Lambda. Um, some of you guys are probably still not comfortable with Lambda, but I want to give you guys a brief explanation of how to use uh, Lambda functions so that you can use your Lambda functions with uh, re.sub or if you uh, read any uh, code regarding um, re.sub and you see Lambda expressions, you'll be able to successfully read some of the code. All right, so this is a simple function. Um, it's just, uh, it's going to square the number you input. So exit the input and we're going to return an output of the number squared. So simply, uh, it's going to square the input and return uh, the square of the input. So if we have three, it's going to return a nine. So we get a nine. Okay, now we can just do the same thing instead of uh, explicitly creating a function, we can do the same thing with uh, lambda. So instead of defining a function with return, what we can do is you can just use lambda x, uh, x squared. So essentially, x is representing the input and x squared is representing the output. So this is the input and this is sort of the uh, return. So lambdas are just a quick way to uh, create functions that are not um, too lengthy or, or very simple functions. Uh, not too lengthy and are very simple. So if I run this, 
uh, square 3, we get the same output. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys uh, an example using re.sub with a function. So the string that we have is Dan has three snails, Mike has four cats, and Alyssa has nine monkeys. So we're going to be focusing on these digits, three, four, and nine. And we're going to be substituting those digits with the square of the digits. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using regular expression with uh, custom functions. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is I just want to show you guys what this pulls out. First, I guess I have to run the string. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to run this. Okay, so it pulls out three. So essentially, this is successfully able to uh, pull out three um, because re.search only finds the first instance. But if we do re.findAll, Okay, if you dot order dot find all, it should pull out all the numbers. Let's see. So it pulls out three, four, nine. So our regular expression is actually pulling out the portions that we are, are interested in. So, uh, so now I'm just going to show you a, a quick example of uh, when you substitute with one. So we're not going to start off with the uh, custom function. We're just going to be using a, a simple string one. And we're going to use one to substitute into what we're finding. So let's just look at the result we get. So if I run this, so Dan has one snails, Mike has one cats, and Alyssa has uh, one monkeys. Um, grammatically, the uh, syntax is incorrect, but just for uh, the example purposes, um, you can see that it's successfully able to uh, take this one and uh, substitute it into the uh, regular expression output. Now what we want to do is we actually want to uh, utilize a function. So instead of um, substituting one into the regular expression output, we want to use a function, the output of a function. Uh, so let's get right into that. So I have the, the function already uh, laid out and it's going to look a little complicated, but it's actually not that bad. Okay. So uh, let's break this down uh, step by step. So the first thing um, is uh, the lambda x. So when we use uh, functions, with re.sub, so remember this is um, what we want to substitute in. Uh, the x actually represents the output from this. So let me see, actually I think I have another example. Um, guess not. So yeah, so essentially the x is rep representing the uh, match objects. So let me give you another example so I could clarify some things for you. Um, re.sub okay so what we're going to do is just going to copy this and instead of this entire expression what we're going to do is we're just going to output x so I want to show you exactly what x is representing so you guys can better understand this more complicated uh, lambda function so if I run this okay I just have to get rid of these parentheses okay all right let's see if I could do string So what I'm doing is, um, because this is returning a match object and you can't replace this match object, you need a string. Essentially you need a string that can replace this uh, regular expression. So what I did was I, I converted the match object and string. But here's what we are, uh, we're getting. So as you can see, these are match objects. There's another match object here and there's another match object here. So essentially X is the match object from this regular expression. So we're going to use that as the input into our function. But remember, uh, when we have match objects to actually grab the uh, result of the match object, we have to use uh, groups. So in our case, um, we can either use group 0 or group 1. Uh, if you guys remember, group 0 in, uh, outputs the entire uh, regular expression, and group 1 outputs only uh, the group. So in this case, uh, this is our group as well as our entire regular expression. So you can use group zero here or group one. Uh, if you guys are a little confused, I suggest you go back to my earlier videos on groups. All right, so I'll just comment this out and uh, let's just clear this up a little bit. Okay, okay. So, so we're using lambda that x and the first uh, portion of our function or the lambda function is x.group. So x.group zero 
is going to pull out the uh, number or uh, it's going to pull out these digits. Remember, x.group0 is going to pull out the uh, result, a string version of the results. Actually, I can just run this. Um, so let me just do this again. And what I'm going to do is get rid of some of this stuff. Uh, x.group, I don't need all these parentheses. And I think this should run. Let me run this. OK, here we go. It's hard to tell in this case, because remember, uh, re.sub outputs the entire thing. But essentially, what uh, X dot group is uh, pulling out is it's pulling out these numbers and so what we're doing essentially in this case is just we're substituting three with a three a four with a four and nine with a nine so we're substituting with the same number we're pulling out the threes and we're not making any changes and we're substituting with the same exact number so I'll just get rid of this so essentially we pull out the same exact number right so we're pulling out the, the three four nine with this X dot group zero and then we're converting it into an int and the reason why we're converting it into an int is because we want to do uh, some calculations to it. So we need an integer here to run this function. So we convert it into an int and then we run square on it. So the int becomes an argument or a parameter to our square function. Uh, we convert it to an int, we input into the square, and then that's going to create an output. But remember, when we use re.sub, we have to convert everything into a string because we're dealing with strings. So so what you have to do is first convert it to a string because we're dealing with strings and this portion has to be substituted into this uh, the regular expression output. So it gets substituted into these uh, regular expression outputs and we, uh, we get our string back but it, this time it's a newly created string. So hopefully uh, you guys can understand that. Hopefully it's not too confusing but let me just run this. And as you can see, um, Dan has 9 nails, uh, Mike has 16 cats, Elisa has uh, 81 monkeys. And if we look at the original string, it's a 3, 4, 9. So it's a 9, 16. We're essentially uh, squaring it. So, so this is just a, a one example of how you can use functions, lambda functions or regular functions with your uh, uh, re.sub uh, method. All right. Um, let's see. So I have another example. So here's another example with a, uh, another function. And uh, this is a, probably a little simpler. OK. So essentially what we're doing is we're importing re. And our input is eat, laugh, sleep, study. So we have four words. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull out each word. So this, uh, this regular expression, uh, alphanumeric and uh, quantifier, is going to pull out this word, this word, this word, and this word. So, so it's, yeah, so it's going to pull out these four words. Um, so those are our groups. So here, I actually uh, purposely did not include the group because I wanted to show you guys what uh, M is. So M is the same thing as X. So remember, M is a match object. So whenever we use re.sub, the, uh, the input is always going to be a match object. So here we actually need a, a group because this is a match object. So we actually have to add a group here um, to pull out the string, pull out the output. So in our case, um, since we want the entire output, the entire output is just going to be this word, then this word, then this word, then this word. Um, we can use m.group0 uh, or just leave it as m.group. So we're going to be pulling out uh, each of these uh, four words. They're going to be four separate instances. And um, we're going to use that as an input into our lambda function. So remember. Uh, this M is considered an input, and the output we're going to get is this. So we're going to use m.group, and for, for m.group is going to represent each of these words, we're going to add ing to each of them. So essentially, we're just adding uh, ing to each of these words. And our input, of course, is our string. So this is our input. So if I run this, as you can see, eating, uh, laughing, sleeping, studying. So. Yeah, pretty simple example. Um, hopefully, this gives you an idea of how to use uh, functions with uh, re.sub. Okay, uh, this is just uh, another example, it's just the same example, but this time I've already included the m.group. All right, now back referencing. So, we could also use back referencing with uh, subs. Uh, if you guys don't know what back referencing is, I, I, I suggest you guys take a look at my earlier videos. But um, I've used the same example in the back referencing video. So we have Merry Merry Christmas. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look for duplicates of any words using back referencing. If I run this, uh, first I have to run this, I'm sorry. 
then if I run this, okay, so as you can see, we pull out Mary Mary and groups represents all of our, our outputs from the regular expression. And as you can see, there are two groups. We can label uh, group one and group two. So if I run this, we'll get the same output, Mary Mary. Um, group one is the first group and group two is the second group. Now we can actually use back referencing within our sub. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So we have, uh, this is going to represent Mary and this is going to represent Mary as well. Now we want to represent, we want to switch the two uh, Marys with the happy and um, the group. So this is uh, back referencing the first group. So what we want to do is we want to include happy and we want to retain one instance of the group. And so if I run this, we get happy and then um, Mary. So even though I'm not explicitly uh, using Mary in my sub, we're able to back reference the regular expression to include it within our substitution. So happy, Merry Christmas. So we take Merry Merry from Merry Merry Christmas and replace with happy and the uh, first group, which is Merry. Okay, so here's another example. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to use group one and then happy. So group one in this case is Merry, so it's going to be Merry and then happy. So if I run this, we get Merry, happy Christmas. And just an, another example with group two, so we're going to have happy, and then group two is this group, so we're going to be referencing this group, which is Mary, so we should get another uh, instance of happy and Mary. So let me just run this, and we get happy and Merry Christmas. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, that's just a, a quick overview on some of the things you can do with re.sub and some of, the, some of the abilities of re.sub. Hopefully uh, you guys find that useful. There's still a couple of more things I want to teach you guys with regular expressions, which is uh, uh, looking forward and looking back and positive forward and negative forward. So I think the next video will be that. And then we can start going into some examples um, of using regular expressions. All right. So uh, that's it with uh, this video. Just leave uh, comments as to what you like or if there's anything you guys would like to see. Feedback as well as to what you liked and what you disliked. Yeah. So any feedback is always welcome. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time.